Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. Part 8, a bit of painting and mounting the aerial engine on the baseboard. In accordance with the instructions on the Precision Paints Etch Primer, I left the paint to dry for a full 24 hours. Now it's time to give them the first coat of the black paint. And you will notice that I'm moving the parts frequently and applying light coats. This seems to be the best way to spray paint. If you put one big thick heavy coat on, apart from it's going to run and look terrible, it's not the best way to do it. And also by applying a thick coat, too much solvent can attack the paint underneath. So as you've just seen, first of all I paint the chimney, then I paint the tanks, then I go back and give the chimney a second coat, then shortly afterwards I return to the condenser and the water tank assembly and give that a second coat. And then all I need to do is just let the paint dry. This is satin black paint and the one problem with satin black is that it varies in how satin it is. I'll revisit the painting in another episode once it's dried. In the meantime I'd like to show you these things. They were sent to me by a friend of mine in the USA. What I'm holding at the moment is a reversing gear assembly for a Stuart Model 7A steam engine. This reversing gear was bought along with a very beautiful example of a Stuart Model 7A steam plant. The plant was originally bought via eBay, but he had it sent to me to fit this reversing gear. But when it arrived it was just rough cast, so he asked me if I could send it to him so he could clean it up. This I did, and this is how it came back. It must have taken a lot of work to get the part to look like this, it really was rough. I'll be making a video series very shortly about fitting these parts to the 7A steam engine. So what else has he sent me in this box of goodies? Well the first thing that's particularly good is this torch. This torch will be very useful for lighting dark orifices. It certainly brightens up the box. I could have done with one of these a few years ago for a girlfriend that I once had. I think that's enough girlfriend jokes for this episode. He also sent me a couple of syringes and two plastic bottles. And the syringes are not for mainlining, the syringes are for oiling small parts on steam engines. And here is a really nice brass belt buckle with an engraving of a steam locomotive on it. And there are some of these as well, which are quite useful things to have. But the best thing he sent me, apart from the reversing gear, are these. And when I finally get them out of the packets, you can see what they are. They're approximately 1 6 scale miniature models of Molotov cocktails. And if you don't know what Molotov cocktails are, they are called petrol bombs. So these will be quite useful if there's ever any small scale urban disorder. These are really a pair of very small spirit burners, and they could be used for firing very small boilers. I'll put them on one side because I never know when they're going to come in useful. Why am I showing the box? Well it's unbelievable. The reversing gear that I showed at the beginning of this sequence, and I also mentioned it was bought in England via eBay, was sent to my friend in America so he could clean up the parts and send them back to me. But then when he sent the parts back to me, there was a really big customs charge, almost £400. I received a customs form to fill in, and I filled that in, stating they were bought in England and as such were not an import, but we still had to pay the fees. Unbelievable. Anyway, on with the job that this video is supposed to be about. No more talk of past girlfriends, small scale urban disorder, or extortionate customs payments. Here is the aerial engine, which is going to be the centrepiece of this plant, and I'm taking off the front panel. And why am I doing that? I'm going to reverse the panel, because the entire engine is going to be mounted on the baseboard the other way around. I discussed this with the owner of the engine, and we both agreed that it was better to mount the engine the other way around so you could see more of the working parts rather than just the flywheel spinning round. And with the panel reversed you can still see the name even from the other side. I need to make sure that this steam engine sits right in the middle of the board. So the first thing to do is to measure the board and it measures 80 centimeters in length. And rather than draw a felt tip pen line on the wood I thought it was a good idea to put the felt tip pen line on a piece of masking tape and stick that to the wood 40 centimetres from one end of the board. What I'm doing at the moment may seem a little bit mad, but it works for me and it's quick. I place a small cast iron flywheel on the wood, and then I measure the distance between the engine's base and the cast iron flywheel all the way round, and all I have to do then is lift the engine's base off the flywheel and draw around it with a felt tip pen. I mark the position with the felt tip pen where I'm going to drill the holes, then using a 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill in my DeWalt drill, I drill through the baseboard on the marks. I'll speed up this part of the video just to make it a bit quicker. I don't drill all the way through initially, I just drill part of the way through, then I complete the drilling process and go through the other side. It's important to line up all the engines on the board, 
So I'm using a piece of mahogany just as a guide. This is not going to be fixed to the board, it's just a template. While I hold the engine in position, I use the 3 16ths of an inch drill to make a mark in the engine spaceboard. This clip shows me drilling a 1 8th of an inch diameter pilot hole in the baseboard using a 1 8th of an inch twist drill. As I don't want the twist drill to accidentally go all the way through the board, I just put a piece of silicone rubber fuel tubing on the drill bit itself. And similarly, when counterboarding the underside of the main baseboard with a larger diameter drill, I use exactly the same principle with a larger piece of tubing. I need to counterbore the underside of the baseboard to take the length of the screws that I'm using to hold the engine in place. As I've only piloted one hole in the engine's baseboard, I put a screw in that to hold the engine to the baseboard, and that way I can make sure that the engine is in exactly the right position. I'm using a set square to just verify that the base of the engine is perfectly aligned with the main baseboard edge, and just in case the casting is not 100% true, I check both sides. But as this is a CNC machine engine, I would assume it to be correct at both ends. With the engine in position, all I need to do now is just drill some pilot holes in the engine's baseboard through the holes in the main baseboard. And once again, these pilot holes are one eighth of an inch in diameter. So now all I have to do is just screw in three more screws. And I'm using a thing here called a screwdriver. I didn't want to use the screwdriver fitting in my electric drill. Sometimes it's just better to do things by hand. So there you have it. The aerial engine is now mounted to the baseboard. One down, two to go. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.